What's up, world? This is Cam coming at you with Shepherds of Men, sitting here with my boys, JP. Hey, guys. And Wilson. What's going on? And producer extraordinaire, Mr. O. What's up, guys? We are pumped to be here today, man. Uh, it's been an awesome time. Hope you guys have been checking out the last few episodes. There's been some incredible information coming out. I know you're growing from it. And uh, we're going to be powered packed today, honestly. Uh, we've got an incredible uh, show coming up. And I will be transparent. I had, I had a whole thought process of what I was going to be talking about. Uh, that has nothing to do with what I'm actually going to be talking about today. Uh, it's been about a week, and it, it will come out later. There may even be a book about it, but uh, the point is there were some things that hit me in the last 24 hours that reminded me of our purpose here as shepherds, our purpose of this movement podcast, and I realized that of, as of late, we haven't talked a lot about kind of some of the just founding thought process and principles of this organization and of this movement and I feel like we just kind of need to get back to it a little bit, you know. Um, we've talked about some important things. We talked about vulnerability recently. We talked about some political stuff recently. We've talked about all kinds of different, very important topics. Uh, today we're going to talk about getting back to being a masculine male. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it is it is so so important. We've got I've got a lot of numbers I'm going to throw at you, a lot of stats, things like that. Um, but I want to get the shepherd's feedback. Uh, some simple questions, uh, so there will be some attitude and some things like that too, because I believe that is just as important as the numbers, in my opinion. So I will say this: uh, stay tuned. We've got some new new stuff. We literally had a meeting right before this. We got some new SOM gear, some swag that's gonna be coming down the pipe. I'm really excited about it. Some things that can allow us and you, that are listeners and supporters of this movement, to go out and expand that brand, expand a thought process, expand expand a mentality so we can continue to take back this country and take back this world and celebrate masculine men, right? That's the whole purpose of it. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be on the website, shepherdsof.men, and, and on to our apparel gear and all that kind of stuff too. So um, so I want to read something to you. This is what kind of hit me, and I know a lot of y'all have seen this. I'm going to uh, just bear with me. I'm going to read it. A lot of y'all have seen this on social media over the years. I think JP said he actually posted this a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, so he kind of beat me to the punch. But um, number one, it's a, it's kind of a cool picture. I don't know if you can see this, but we're going to try to put it up there. It's like some burly dude with his daughter on it. I mean, that's just like, man, right? <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to read this real quick because it hit me hard. The masculine American male is a dying breed. We have been told for far too long that violence is never the answer. We've been told that it's, a cruel, it's cruel to kill our own food. We've been conditioned to believe that there is no place in modern society for the man who refuses to shave his chest or wear skinny jeans. As a man, you are a protector. As a man, you are a provider. As a man, you are solely responsible for the safety and well-being of your family. How can you be a good husband if you can't defend your wife? How can you be a good father if you can't protect your children? Remember, the eyes of the children are fixed upon you. You serve as an example of what young men should grow up to be and of what young women should seek out in a partner. So, grow your beard, wear your boots, eat your steak, Carry a knife, own a gun, protect your woman, fight for what is right and just, be strong, be of good courage, long live the masculine American male. I get freaking mm. goosebumps reading it every time I do, because that really is the epitome of, of what I believe and yeah. what I know these guys believe. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Except but, for the beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about you. I thought about you during that point. I'll grow your goatee and be proud of it. Yes, sir. You know, you have, at least you have some masculine hair. In one little spot right there on the end of your chin. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's another important thing. Bust your friend's balls. Uh, I got in trouble for that the other day. I was like, I got to bust his balls. We're boys now. Mm. You know, That's what you do. You got to keep each other. You sh iron sharpens iron, right? That's right. right. So I'm going to keep you sharp. You can't grow facial hair. I'm going to remind you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what you can do about it. but um, So I want to just pose one simple question. Then I'm going to get into some things that are probably more, because that is like a feeling. When I read that, I get a feeling. Uh, some, and, and if you don't, and, and you're a dude, or even a lady, honestly, I, like when I, I read that to my wife earlier, and she was like, damn, you know, that's good. Like, that's that's the kind of man I want to be around, you know? Uh, and I, any woman that I respect has that same feeling. One thing I love about my wife, and I've heard y'all's wives say this stuff too, is they don't get their panties in a wad about the roles, how important our role is and their role is and how different they really are. Not that there, and we've talked about this on recent episodes, not that there isn't some overlapping now more than there used to be, and that's, that is important. Um, and you can have each other's back and you can work as a team, but there's still specific things that really only a man can bring to the table for your family. And there's specific things that really only a woman and a wife can bring to the table for your family. 
and and confusing those is I think where we are as a society right now in a lot of ways. But she she was getting you know fired up about me reading that. I get fired up about reading it. So there's something in your spirit that that speaks to that I, I hope you can still hear. You know, I hope that hasn't been um, uh, diluted you know too much by society at this point. Uh, if you live in California, it may be tough. I mean, like you're really going to have to put on like you're going to have like some new ear earphones or something. But it's still there. I promise you, it's still there. Just kind of having some fun with you. I know there's some great people in California. There's just yeah. a lot less of them than there used to be. So because um, they're moving, they're moving to Tennessee. <laughs> I know, right? We talked about that earlier. I don't blame them. That's so uh, it, before we get into some of the stats, though, like for you guys, like tell me how you believe how important the male role is. I know this is a very general, broad question, but like just in in your heart of hearts for the listeners, like to you, what is, what is the importance of a masculine male in his home, in his community, in the country? Uh, I know we could talk about this forever, but uh, what role does that play? How important is that role? Like in in your priority list, and we all kind of know the answer. Where does that rank? Well, well, there's, there's no doubt in my mind, it's, it's top priority for me, uh, because of, because of what it does provide. I think it provides balance, um, and, and, and some, some sort of structure. Um, I think if in, in some of the reason that you see the chaos that we see in the world today is because you've been fed a lie that masculinity is a bad thing. Uh, because ultimately you need uh, the masculine individuals or the, the, the warrior mentalities uh, to be fully intact because they're the ones who actually hold the peace, right? Um, peace is being the man with the bigger stick, right? So we need, we need guys that have virtues and principles that are masculine. Um, and masculine doesn't mean that, that you, know, you can fight good or you, you've got muscle or you've got a beard and you know, that you've been fed a lie there too. Masculine is a, is a matter of about the beard part or just all of it, <laughs> all, of it. <laughs> all of it. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to double down on the beard thing. Uh, but what it's, it's, it's important because your boys need to see it. And just like in that, that, uh, that message that you just read there, I 100% believe in that because mm. at masculinity, you lead by example, you lead from the front as a man, it's a little bit more of a, you know, like this do, do as I do. Right. And, and, right. and that's a huge responsibility as an individual. Um, and, and I believe that's where masculinity comes in. It's a matter of, I'm going to go through the, you know, the, the, the minefield and you follow me and do as I do. Right. And it's not that I'm, 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 I'm not afraid to go through the minefield. It's a matter of, I'm going to go either way mm-hmm. because I I'm, I'm, I'm the leader here. This is what I need to do. And that's the example that you should set for your kids. The reason that, that kids are terrified of stuff today and they're just so wishy-washy about everything is because there hasn't been that masculine structure or that anchor, um, in their households. Um, and we're, we've lost that because I'm just, it blows my mind how, and please understand the majority or the, the minority of people are some of the loudest out there. So the ones that, that talk about, uh, you know, feminism and, and all this stuff, that's, that's bullshit. That's all a facade, man. I, I, I guarantee you, if you were to go poll and I don't have the exact numbers, but I'm telling you right now, if you took a thousand women, 900 of those thousand would say they prefer a masculine male. Yeah. Now, and, and masculine doesn't mean that you come home, crack a beer and you slap your wife. No, that's a bitch. That's quite that, the is, opposite. that is, that yeah. is, it, it, and, th- and that's something that needs to be very clear. A masculine man can come home, bring his wife some flowers mm-hmm. and be the rock in the household and work his freaking ass off. And then ask his wife what she needs help with when he gets home mm-hmm. and can go do dishes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause if you're not, if you're not masculine, then maybe you're insecure about stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yep. So masculinity is very comfortable with where you're at. And then, and then you're, you're the driving force. So for me, it's it's paramount as a man your masculinity is is where where you really display your principles and where you display your leadership well we've talked about that before too where it's uh, there there there's a reason there's the word masculine and there's the word feminine like they're both real they both exist and they're both necessary why mm-hmm. would why would one be more important than the other but but aren't they both 100% important of course they are right that's why the family unit is so important and so your children can see both those roles regardless of gender which there's only two, 
regardless of gender, mm -hmm. your children need to see both roles because if they're a boy, they need to see what a man looks like and they need to know what kind of woman to seek out as a wife. If they're a girl, they need to see what a the proper woman, how they carry themselves and what they do and what to seek out as a husband from their father. Yep. If they don't have those examples, how would they know? Well, how, uh, they're going to learn from school or society, which not. is screwing them up. Well, yeah. and, and on, not gonna yeah, and on top learn. of that, like to, to your point, it, it, and it also goes back to confidence. A, a, a child that grows up with a masculine father that is positive masculinity. Uh, so please understand that that masculinity is not what you're being fed. Masculinity right. that you're being fed in mainstream society is a lie. Mm -hmm. But true masculinity, a kid that grows up in that, a, a, a boy that grows up in that, will grow up more self-confident. He'll do better things in his life because he'll attack things that he's afraid of. And I'm going to go through some numbers on that too in a minute. So, okay, keep, right, no, no, so no, that's no, great. That's great. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up what you're saying. Yeah. We, yeah. This so, is just not our opinion. And, and, and it goes back to some of that stuff, you know, like we've talked about in the past. You know, I used to push Maverick over whenever he got old enough to walk. I would yep. push him over. And that wasn't that wasn't to be a dick thing. It's just like in the wild, you know, you're, you're, your males prepare the young males yep. for life. Mm-hmm. Because they want them to be more... That's a masculine trait. A feminine trait is more of a cultivating kind of thing, yeah. like nurturing kind of thing. And I'm not saying that a woman has to just be nurturing because there's some women out there that can provide some masculine traits to some kids. My mom did it with a paddle several times uh, on me, but I'm just telling you, it, it, it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a big difference in the way that a kid will, will grow up. And I think that's why we have so much confusion and so many scared people out here that turn into social justice warriors. Oh, wow. Yeah. Such warriors. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, the essence of a, of a man is, is a true gentleman. Um, I think that you respect your wife. You you take you honor her just like in a, my Christian faith. You 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 love and and do anything for her. you would die for your wife, um, and I, I would totally do that. Um, you you just basically provide and protect, like what you guys said. Uh, there's a book, good book called The Kingdom Man. If you really want to dive into to how that role looks like, you should read it. Uh, you should go get it. Um, but it, it talks about, you know, just owning your domain and making sure that you set the example, you set the safeguards, you, you, you live purposely. You don't just go, you know, day to day or, or problem to problem. You, you actually have a plan and, uh, and you, uh, you be the example because your kids are looking to you all the time. And no matter what you do, that they're going to learn more from the example you set versus what you say. Cause my, my mom was that way. In some cases she would say, do as I say, not as I do. And uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, even as a prime example, I mean, uh, with how she m money management, it's still a challenge for me to this day to, to manage it co correctly. So you have to take this seriously. That's the biggest thing. Being a gentleman and look at that. Look up what a gentleman is. If you, you go Google anything uh, nowadays and you can actually see what it's all broken down to be. Go Google it. Go see. Seek out what what you really should be. If just because you don't have that example, or if you didn't weren't blessed with a good example of a man uh, in your life, doesn't mean that you can't become one. Um, you just got to seek it out and find people that you want to emulate. But the same thing with your kids. I mean, you you've got to set that example and and take it seriously. Yeah, and I think you you hit on something there about you don't necessarily have to be what people would expect you to be because right. of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, you can decide that it's, you know, the buck stops here. This is going to be different. I've heard JP talk about that before. Like mm -hmm. I didn't use my, uh, my, my situation with my father, not knowing him most of my life as an excuse. I use it as a reason to say that my kids aren't going to be like that. Like they're, it's not going to be the same. Right. Um, and I know you're creating a great relationship with your dad now, but, and that's awesome. You know, there, there's, there's some victory in that, but the point is, like, you can decide what you're going to be. So if you don't have that role, don't don't play the victim mentality bullshit that we see. Mm -hmm. That is another piece that I believe our society is weak and and has that victim mentality because they didn't have a real man in the house going, I got this, you know, yeah. like showing them how to figure stuff out, showing them how to take responsibility and be accountable for things as opposed to, you know, I, I, my feelings are hurt or whatever it may be. I think that uh, when you took, talk about roles and, and women, and it's nothing no stab against you, ladies, you are, I want my kid to go to my wife and, and seek, um, you know, when he gets hurt, he gets a kiss from his his mom mm -hmm. to, to make it feel better. That A guy shouldn't do that. I like I mean, to get a kiss from my wife when I get hurt. Yeah. It makes it feel better. If it makes you feel better. So, you know, you want to, you want that nurture aspect. And, and whenever you come up uh, with being a, a boy, you know, in, in that prime example is, is because I look at it as being a good father. You're almost like a coach. You, you pull the best out of your kid, no matter what. 
and you know how to do that effectively, or you should, um, and and make him uh, not weak because you go, no, you're better than this. And you stretch him just like uh, Rocky and his son. He goes, you're better than that. You know, that yeah. whole, that whole uh, awesome. That's not you and you know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what a dad does. Because a mom, and, and some moms are, my mom, I mean, my wife, she is like, she doesn't have any slack with my son, which is great. And then sometimes she does give a little bit of leniency and he, let him cry a little bit or whatever. But there's a point there where she'd be like, all right, it's done. Me, I, I don't have any patience with that, man. I don't like whining. Hey, that's not what we are. That's not what Wilsons are about. Unless you get hurt and you're bleeding or whatever, understand. Yeah, let it out. You know, it's cool. But then let's let's clear it up and rub it off and you go on your way. So, you know, it's just a, it, some things women can provide that, are, that men can't. And then there's some things that men can provide that women really can't. And that's to stretch that son to, to be the best that we're talking about. And we're talking about men. So if you got a daughter, there's there's probably a little bit difference. I don't have a daughter, so I have no frame of reference there uh, where O probably could ch- chime in on, on how to raise a woman to seek out a good man. Uh, but you can't, you, you can't do that effectively if you're not that man that she should be seeking. So I want to read some uh, statistics and, and I'll kind of, I've got a, a bunch of stuff that I want to kind of sprinkle throughout here, but if you want to check this out, it's on fatherhood.org. It's a great website. It's got a lot of good information, um, and it's presented in a way that even people from Mississippi can dive into it and get a lot out of it. So you should feel good about that, unless you're from Arkansas. Um, <laughs> so there is a... <laughs> what, do you, what, is, what is y'all's slogan if uh, we're from Mississippi? Well, at least we're not at from least, Arkansas. Right, from Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to hang your hat on something, right? It's like, when you, it's like when you go to Mississippi State. At least I didn't go to Ole Miss. Oh. Right. <clears throat> so, anyways, uh, there's a crisis for all my football fans today. Go dogs. Hey, River River Robberies. Don't screw today. it up again. I don't know how great that game's going to be, though. Like, Oklahoma's not even really good this year. Yeah, but neither is Texas. Could be an awesome game. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, the title of this particular thing is uh, The Father Absence Crisis in America. And I'm not a big believer in using the word crisis all the time i think mainstream media uses crisis every time anything happens like it's cloudy outside we have a sun crisis um so but but i do believe this particular topic is a crisis uh there's a crisis in, and i'm going to read again just because it's good information i know you can go look it up but there's a crisis in america according to u.s census bureau 19.7 million children more than one in four let that sink in more than one in four live without a father in the home 25% of our children do not have a father in the home. Consequently, there is a father factor, as they call it, in nearly all of the social uh, ills facing America today. Research shows that a child that is raised in a father absent home, he or she is affected in the following ways. So I'm going to just some of this stuff. And again, this, you've probably seen some of this on social media. I've seen it go around. It's It's a really cool graphic, but from a poverty perspective, uh, kids without a father, four times greater uh, risk of poverty, Mm. four times greater risk of poverty. Teen pregnancy, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. Now, I want you to think about, as I'm saying some of these things, I want you to think about why. Like, if there is such a huge part of your life missing as a father, what do you think as an immature child or young adult you're doing? What I'll tell you what I did. It wasn't from a father. It was from just whatever. When I didn't feel whole, I tried to fill that gap with other things. Right? Is that That's a normal human tendency is to try to fill whatever gap you're feeling in your spirit, your soul, or whatever. Um, Behavioral problems, more likely to have behavioral problems, more likely to face abuse and uh, neglect, two times greater risk of infant mortality. That one I didn't really understand at first until I read some of these other things where I realized the stress and strain that is put on a pregnant woman that doesn't have a real man by her side it's amazing the numbers, and I'll show you one. It's like almost double the infant mortality. Um, uh, yeah, because the, like miscarriages and stuff like that. I believe that's what they're talking that about. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, that because they're so me. their body is in such a state of stress, you know, and they're trying to grow a child inside of them. More likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, filling that gap. More likely to go to prison to because they were probably trying to get some drugs and alcohol. Uh, two times, two times more likely to suffer obesity, same, same as drugs and alcohol. Honestly, uh, I think that is a, a issue that we do not address enough. Um, the obesity in this country is ridiculous. And a lot of the health issues we have stem from that. And I think if we focused on that, as much as we focus on the China virus, we probably have a lot more healthy people, yep. um, more likely to commit crime, two times more likely to drop out of high school. Okay. Mm. Thoughts on those? 
Yeah, so I think that that tells me. So all of that stuff that you're talking about right there stems from exactly what you said. So they have to fill the gap. Now, now here's here's the thing. What you're comparing there though is a very immature mindset of a yep. child filling a gap, an adult filling a gap. So if you lo- if you were to lose your father when you turned 25, the impact is nowhere near as severe as if your father left when you were three. Because the first right. thing that a child does when his father's not in the home growing up in those critical years when they're growing up is they go to look for some th- something else to grab a hold of. Generally, we've talked about this in previous episodes of the problem in society and stuff like that, especially in the black community. And this was in the episode when we talked to Trey about it. And Trey was very candid about that. He was like, you know, the, the thing about it is in the community, when you don't have a father in the household, you look for a father. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. guess who the fathers are that are accepting out there? Yeah. The drug dealers, mm-hmm. the gangbangers, because they want to use them. Right. Yep. So, of course, everything else just trickles down from there, because I promise you, they're not a good influence on them. And they don't they don't care about them. Now, some of them might, I don't know, might care about them a little bit, whatever. But ultimately, what they need them for is to peddle their drugs yep. or to move their money or to do whatever they need them to do. So they get into the gangs, they use it as protection, and that they're seeking out that, that masculinity. They're seeking it. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, because you have to have that masculinity in your life, especially males. I don't know if they split that up between males and female kids. Um, I would imagine a female that was raised in a household with her mother uh, would, would see issues later on in life. Whereas the boy would start to see issues early in life. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the, the female would maybe with her relationship problems when she later on in life, or maybe, you know, when she gets in her teenage years or whatever. Uh, but I, that, that kind of stuff doesn't surprise me because I mean, you hit the nail on the head, you, you fill the gap. And as a boy, because I, I was, I was a boy once I've never been a girl, so I can speak to that part. You automatically look for masculinity somewhere. And when yep. you find it, a lot of times with an immature mind, you find the wrong kind of masculinity and yep. you latch onto it. And then it's a downward spiral from there. I mean, I can speak for myself in two situations. Uh, one, you know, when you're younger, you lash out, you, you get in more fights, you're, you're more physical, you're emotionally not stable. You, you just don't know how to deal with your emotions. So you have all of this going on in your head and then one guy says something wrong or whatever. It's just automatically lash out. Let's, let's beat the crap out of him. Um, two, I've also seen someone who was very close to his father, um, actually died in high school. His dad died in high school, uh, probably in freshman year. And he went in a downward spiral and I don't think he's ever made it back out. Like it, it affected him so bad. Like he was so tight with his dad. Now I couldn't relate because me and my dad wasn't as tight as he was. But he would throw parties and, man, he would just get into anything, any type of drug, any type of, you know, sex, all the stuff that he could just get away from the, the feeling that he was dealing that dealing with that he couldn't process. He couldn't figure out how to latch on to something else that would be more fulfilling. Um, for me, thank God I was a Christian early. Uh, I, literally, that was a testament to my faith is what gave got me through some of those challenging times. I, I found God uh, at, at nine and uh, ever since I was nine years old and, and, and growing up, I was actually became a lot better kid. Uh, but prior, I did just didn't know how to you know translate all that. Um, and then being and, and the, the bit worst part was is that you did have some experiences with your dad. You know, on the weekends you, you get you know because my family's split, and it wasn't enough time. It wasn't enough uh, you know direction. And, and then some of the cases was it was just too rough, or too hard because. You know, we were there to, we didn't, we weren't, um, like kind of how you were talking about with Braylon. He comes to you, you have principles, you have mm-hmm. rules of the house, but then you don't want to be so, so strict because you're like, I only get that weekend with yeah. him, you know? Yeah. And it was a, it was a fine line there that uh, my dad had to learn how to play, but um, we had some really good memories and then we had some bad because it was just not, um, it wasn't a, uh, a, an environment to grow, if you, if that makes sense. But I've seen both sides and, and it's, it's challenging. It's, it's very challenging. And then luckily I had my grandfather and then some, uh, my coaches I actually got into sports at a young age. And that really helped me tremendously because you're a part of an team environment. You're out to, to win. You're out to, to the principles of, you know, putting it all out on the field and, and trying your hardest. Uh, that's what boys need. They need to be a part of something that's going to stretch them, challenge them, uh, exert the energy that they have built up and uh, really do something uh, important. So if you are a single mom out there and your, your child is, you know, just a handful, put them into some type of sports, get them active, get them something that they can take their mind off of something else. And, uh, and, and a team sport really is going to be probably better in my opinion, uh, than just an individual sport. But, you know, if it's wrestling or if it's football or if it's baseball, soccer, any of those type of sports will do. 
and check out the coach before you do it, you know, because some of those coaches are kind of weak. Well, and that's the point I was going to make is I think the important part of the, the sport is not – and team sports are great. I think they're important. Individual sports are great too. I think it's the coach. Yes, Because the coach what's happening there, now you have a male figure mm-hmm. that is playing a role that is so important, you know. So God bless all the coaches out there. I mean, yeah. male and female for sure, but specifically right now, just talking about the guys, like there's a – I know a lot of a lot of coaches. I know a lot of men that are coaches, and they play such a bigger role than they probably even really know uh, in a lot of these kids' lives mm-hmm. because they don't have that at home. You know, they don't have that uh, firsthand. Something is going to go back to what you were just talking about. Um, I want to talk about the you, you talked about how it influenced uh, your friend, who's a guy, obviously, but how it influences young ladies. Mm. Uh, and why they're so let me give you this number so in 2014 there was 17.4 million kids living in fatherless homes so in 2019 five years later it was 19.7 million so it grew 2.3 million more homes wow 2.3 million more kids living in fatherless homes in five years that so why is that growing why is that number increasing i believe it goes back to um that gap that young ladies are trying to fill and also that gap that young men are trying to fill. So young men are uh, maybe have an in a, uh, uh, incorrect view on how to, to treat a lady and you know how to have a proper relationship and how to be committed to something. And so they're promiscuous. Mm-hmm. A young girl is seeking s- seeking a man to love her. I'm telling right. you, I, I'm, it, screw, it screws everybody up. It screws guys up. It screws girls up. But it will screw a girl up to not have a father. Mm-hmm. I mean, it will screw them up royally. And they will spend the rest of their life until they find a real man to step in, trying to find somebody that will fill that gap to make them feel loved. They just want to feel loved. They want a man to love them unconditionally. That's what they want. And unfortunately, when they're young and immature, and maybe even when they're older and immature, that may turn into, I'm going to date a bunch of dudes because I feel like this guy might actually love me or I'm going to whatever. And then, you know, then it turns to sexual activity and then that turns to having uh, kids out of wedlock. And then it turns into this spiraling effect of why is this number growing? Why do we have more kids that are living in fatherless homes? Because we have more young people having sex and not having relationships, not being married and not creating that, that family unit that core that has core values and it just and it just perpetuates. Well, let's let's be honest. You become what you tolerate. Um, as a society, we have gotten really, really bad about tolerating bullshit. Mm-hmm. We've got really, really bad about tolerating things that are that are, in my opinion, uh, not tolerable. Right, uh, and and that goes for a lot of different stuff. You know, I've 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 had several conversations with people, and and I'll, I'll say this, this is going to be controversial right here. I had a conversation I like with it already with a with a gay guy. Um, that that was talking to me about uh, we were getting back and forth about stuff being in mainstream society. I said I think it's bullshit that two guys are on my TV making out, and mm-hmm. and I don't care what your beliefs are as an individual. If you want to be gay, then be gay. That's fine. That's your your right as an individual. If that's your choice, then that's fine. But my problem is when it crosses the line where I have to explain to my child while you why you guys are making out on TV, and I have to explain to a five year old why two men are kissing. Well, that's yeah, it's bullshit. What about other, everybody else? I said same thing goes for them. I shouldn't have to explain to my five year old why some guys grope in some woman in the middle of a restaurant. It's the same thing. Yeah. Now I feel a little bit more strongly about the the other side of it because yeah. at least a man and a woman are supposed to be together, in right. my opinion. Uh, right. Which I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. That's that's just my opinion. Way my my household runs and stuff like that. And if you have a problem with it, and that's okay, you're allowed to be wrong. Um, but. That, that kind of stuff for me personally chaps my ass because we we accept that stuff nowadays. That's just like... Well, we're so worried about offending. Well, we're so, so we're, worried, we're about, worried offending. about offending people. And I'm, and I'm telling you right now, if it, I'm not the type of person that's going to come and tell you that you're wrong for what you're doing. I don't, I don't Do care. Whatever you want. When it starts to affect me, though, that's when we right. have a problem. Right. Um, just like I, the, the, whole, the whole idea of divorce in general. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, and I'm not saying that people didn't have problems back in the day. There wasn't, um, you know, stuff where, where men cheated on their wives and their wives cheated on, on, you know, the men and stuff. I, I, I firmly believe stuff like that happens. I'm not naive. Uh, but for some odd reason in society today, it's okay to be married six times. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like that, that used to be shameful back right. in the day. Mm-hmm. But for some odd reason, we accept that shit today as almost like they're the victim. 
Mm. No, yeah. they oh, made yeah. stupid fucking decisions. Yep. They're not a victim. It's true. They yep. made dumbass decisions. And to your point, that individual that grew up with without a family unit is searching for that attention. Yep. Whether it's bad or good, they don't really care. They want the attention. So a girl goes out and gets a shithead guy, some piece of crap that doesn't know how to take care of his own stuff. They have sex before they get married, whatever it may be. She ends up pregnant. He takes off because he didn't really care about her in the first place. He was just trying to get a piece of ass. Yep. And I'm just trying to be completely candid and straightforward That's with this. Everybody, the, the thing is, everybody knows this. Right. Everybody knows Nobody this. Wants to Nobody say wants, it. wants to talk about it. Right. But it's the truth. It's 100% the truth. Um, and to back it, I don't, I didn't mean to cut no, you off. No, you're good. That, that was my point. But I, I get fired up about like you do. And listen, I want everybody to understand. Um, and, and, we are not insensitive to the fact that there's exceptions and that there's things that happen or whatever. Sure. Oh, right. So yeah. listen, yeah. I, like I get, I get it. Like my family has divorce in it. Some of it's justified. Um, whatever your don't stay in a are. toxic situation. I'm not. I'm not by any means saying no, no, no. stay in a toxic. I, I know, I'm situation. just making sure that. Yeah, like, yeah. But but the majority. Like, I think we can all agree that what used to be the standard is no longer the standard. Right. Right. And if you think to, so, think about the other side of that. If you're starting to understand like how tragic this can be for young people and you're an adult married with kids, how important is it for you to step up and go, okay, my wife and I don't always get along, and there's some things we need to work on, but the answer is not bailing. Yeah. Because that's not mm-hmm. just affecting me, because yeah. it will. Yeah. Oh, it'll, yeah. it'll mess with you, I believe, mm-hmm. if you bail on your marriage. Um, but it's also affecting your kids at a more drastic rate. Yeah. So, like, freaking work on it, yep. you know? And, you know, I, I, there's people that are super close to us that we know like kudos for going, you know what? This sucks. It's uncomfortable, but it's important to stay together for not, not, and not that whole, we're going to stay married for the kids until they get old enough. And then we're going to get divorced. Yeah. Cause that won't screw them up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on my timer on my phone. So, um, my light was going down. So to kind of, to back up some of that from, from a, uh, numbers perspective. So people understand this and this is all stuff you can look up. This is on fathers.com. Okay. Uh, out of wedlock births. So we were just talking about all this. Why are, you know, why is this number growing? 40.6% of all newborns, this is in 2008. So this is 12 years ago. 40%, 40.6% of all newborns in 2008 were born in unmarried to unmarried parents. Wow. Mm-hmm. 40% unmarried parents. That was 12 years ago. Do you think that's increased? Oh yeah. You better believe it. So in compare, so that's 1.7 million kids in comparison in 1960 it was 224,000. So it was 5%. Because it was more shameful. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it, I, certainly it was shameful. And I don't know that that's necessarily the right way to go about it. Like, I don't think you should shame people. No. But you should certainly have standards and expectations. Yeah. Right. I, and you should have things that you're teaching. And well, you should be we're... weak to those standards and expectations, too. Because I, I, I have a, had a couple conversations with some folks that were like, well, you have too high expectations. And I'm like, well, then what what, what should our, my, right. my expectations should, I have should be? Should I have low no, you should strive to be better. Realistic period. expectations. I don't. I don't. Right. Here's reality. Yeah. I don't oh, think yeah. That, I don't think that the, the right way to do that is to attack individuals. No. no. So you don't attack individuals. You make you make a push like what we're doing with the shepherds of men to change a culture. Correct. That's the biggest thing. So it's a matter of because I I'm one of those statistics in 2008. Mm-hmm. Right. I I, right, I am, right. and I'm, yeah. I'm I'm one of those individuals. So that happened, um, and it was it was a very immature. Uh, mindset on my behalf that is a very telling story of what we're trying to explain right now. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you make a mistake, you make it right. Mm-hmm. But as a as a culture, we have got to pivot. And that's not right. one individual. That's not saying that that um, I don't know what's a what's a good stripper name Becky. Becky, that's a good stripper name. What kind of strip diamond did you go to? Diamond, yeah. Star. <laughs> it's like sixty plus. Can- yeah. Candy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I never heard that name before. Lollipop. So, but the, cinnamon. The, the fact of the matter is, they make a bad decision. Doesn't mean we go and attack them. No. What we need to do is create an environment that fosters that good decision making before you go do that stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't they go have a kid? They don't need you to jump their ass and stuff and be like, oh my god, you got a kid out of wedlock stuff like because that doesn't help. That's no. not going to help the situation. It's going to make them even more resentful or whatever it may be. You foster the environment prior to that to say, listen, it's okay to take time. It's okay to take time to get to know somebody. It's okay to be very picky about who you choose. It's okay to have high standards for a man. You don't need that attention. You don't have to have that attention. Find the right person. And as a guy, if you're out here just, just 
doing whatever with whatever woman and stuff, man, I, I'm going to tell you, dude, it's leaving an empty spot in your soul too. You might think you're a player. You might think you're a bad dude. You might think you're out here running game and stuff like that. But I promise you, when you're sitting at home at night, you think about that stuff. I mean, you can try to fool everybody else about your cool stuff and how, you, how you're a bad dude and stuff. But you, at night, when you're sitting alone, you think about that. Well, here's the thing too. You got to think about this. You're thinking short term, um, you know, lustful, like uh, in the flesh of wanting to have sex with somebody. But when you think long term, let's say you find the love of your life and you've got 20 on your, under your belt and you have that co- tough conversation because she was asking. She's wanting to know. What are you going to say? It's and then when she three. finds and then when she finds out and she's only been faithful to, to not have anybody. You're going to feel like an ass. And that's going to be a tough conversation that you're going to have with your wife if she's been that way. Like, literally, I, um, I'm, I haven't been promiscuous uh, in my life. I actually took it seriously because uh, my, my own sister, uh, I give Whoa. credit to this, my own sister told me that why are you, you going to date... You can't go from promiscuous to Wilson my own sister. Wilson has a weird way of streaming <laughs> sentences together. I wasn't pr- yeah, promiscuous. If you read this in a book, it wouldn't be the same paragraph. No, you, it, like, it'd be two different chapters. Wilson just kind of combines Maybe them, even a so. different book. So, <laughs> maybe one you shouldn't read. So let me let me rephrase this. Okay, so I never slept around a lot. And, and the reason being is, is luckily my sister had the, had the sense to tell me because we my dad wasn't around to, to talk to me about this particular topic. Uh, my mom didn't really say much because she was very out there. Um, uh, not to say anything negative about her, but her past life was not something that she could talk about, you know. So my sister told me, she goes, "Hey, why are you dating someone that you don't you you don't see yourself marrying? You're just wasting your time. Be friends. You don't have after to- a certain period of time. Like obviously, you got to take a few dates and see like well, if there's yeah. something there. But if you've been dating for like two years and you know and you're, you're thinking not- like, no, nah, I don't think I would marry. I don't know if I would marry them. That's that's a long time to not know. Right. I mean, yeah. I think. I, no, I agree. That's and, why I'm saying take your time. Well, like, that's why I valued that piece of intimacy. Like that was a, that's something that you should cherish and you should keep to yourself for the woman of your dreams. Also as a girl, for the man of your dreams, some one day. That's something that is, is it's a, you're giving off a piece of yourself every single time you do that. And by the time you go to get, finally find the person of your life that you want to be with, how many pieces are left of you by that time? You don't have your whole self. You got you've given off a little bit of pieces of your heart, a little bit of pieces. Because I mean, you put sex into any kind of conversation, any type of relationship, it just complicates things. You can't go like if you had a best friend. Let's just say you had two two people, best friends. Then they go to have sex, but it doesn't work out. They can't make it for the long term. They're never going to be able to go back to that relationship that they had prior. Never. So you've got to really think about that. I was. When you were talking about it, I was thinking about it. I was like, that'd be weird. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> um, so it, Yeah, and, and here's the other piece of it, too, is we're talking about, like, you know, uh, men kind of stepping up and playing the role that they should play and being masculine men. I know we kind of started with, like, uh, with have a beard or don't have a beard. I don't really care. I, I think if you can grow facial hair, you know, it doesn't hurt your game. Um, <laughs> no, nah, grow a beard. Yeah, grow a beard. <laughs> I do believe that you should you keep yourself in some kind of physical good condition um, so you can protect your family. I do think you should grow your mind so you can provide for your family and, and um, be mature to, to lead your family. I do think you should have a strong spiritual foundation because that may be the most important thing you could do is be a spiritual leader of your family. So there's all those different things. But as we're specifically kind of this, this conversation's kind of evolved into, you know, fatherless homes there's also, I think what it creates in some men is this uh, lack of commitment, you mm-hmm. know, the, or these commitment issues, I, I guess is probably a better way to say it. Because I know too many guys that are in, and I'm, I'm putting it on the guys. Yes, the girl is in the relationship too, so she's got responsibility as well. But I know too many guys that are in long-term relationships. I'm talking about like bought houses together relationships, <laughs> like having having kids, not like had one accident kind of thing, but like having kids um, and, and, and living together and buying houses and doing, all, and doing life together and aren't married. Like, and you can say what you want about, well, being married is just a piece of paper, da, 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 whatever. That's a whole different podcast. My, my point is you have not, you have not stopped long enough to say, you know what? I love you. I'm committed to you. I, I'm in this, right? Like freaking take a knee and ask that lady to be your lady forever. Like stop being a freaking pussy and man up and say, listen, I'm already doing life with this person. And I, I know this is maybe more opinion than it is. Uh, no, it's fact. You need to freaking step up and say, 
it's time for me to, to not have a commitment issue anymore. My dad was a piece of shit, whatever. N- not mine, but I'm saying if that's your if that's your relationship, or my mom. I, I know people that like the reason that they're I think they have commitment issues is because their mom was batshit crazy. Right? That has nothing to do with you. Wilson just said that. You can write your own story. You don't have to hurt your your girlfriend, your baby mama, or your kids long term because you you had stuff in your past. Deal with it and move on, right? Um, I don't that's just I, I, I got some people right now that I want to have that conversation with, like, bro. Come on, yep. It, yep. it's time. It's time to step up and take that next step. We had that. We had that conversation on that uh, podcast. I don't know what episode it was, but it was about being decisive. And it's I really can, good I almost, whichever one it was. I can, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I can almost guarantee you that those guys are indecisive in life. Period. Mm-hmm. They have a hard time yep. making decisions. They have a hard time committing to stuff. Um, so, they're afraid they're going to get burned. Well, yeah, and, I think and, and ultimately and, what yep, it comes down to. Yep, and and you're right. I mean, there's there's a lot of people in those kind of situations, but a lot of times it's because the men are not decisive, um, which is a trait that you you better a skill that you better learn uh, as a man and you, a masculine man. You need to be decisive. You need to be able to make decisions and commit. Well, I agree. I I, I want to. Uh, this is we could talk forever. I do want to kind of keep this short because there's some things that I hope and I encourage people to go out and look up for themselves. Um, if there's anything else y'all want to add on this right now, feel free to, but I want to kind of leave the listeners and the watchers. If you're, if you're with us on YouTube um, with some pretty, um, some more telling statistics, some things that might just kind of hit you in the gut a little bit more. If you're still not convinced how important it is for men to play the role that they need to play. Okay. So here's some other ones. And this, this is from, um, I don't know where it's from. Just look it up. Uh, I know he's supposed to reference it and all this stuff. This is from the fatherless generation dot com. There's some other words in there that should get you there though. Google, get the Google machine out statistics, 63% of youth, this, this stuff I'm telling you, like if this doesn't turn your stomach, then you should stop listening to us. You should stop being a part of society. You should go freaking, um, remove yourself from getting in the way of other people being better. If this doesn't, and I mean that sincerely, like you are uh, not valuable if this does not turn your stomach. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Mm. Five times the average. Five times more kids are committing suicide because they don't have a father. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 32 times the average. 85% 85% of all children who show behavioral disorders came from fatherless homes. 80 per, Listen to this one. Whew, 80% of rapists, I don't really understand this whole sentence, rapists with anger problems. I think that's pretty much all of them. Right. Let's just say 80% of rapists come from fatherless homes. Hmm. Come on, guys. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes, which is nine, time the, nine times the average. Seventy-five percent of all the adolescent patients in chemical abuse centers come from fatherless homes. This is serious stuff. Seventy percent of use in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. None of that crap is good, Mm-mm. and none of that's like fifty-one percent. It's all seventy-five plus. It's a ridiculous number. And I, I want to throw something in there though. Yeah. Um, while while you're talking about that, because that's 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 just absolutely it's not surprising but it's mind-blowing kind of facts you know it's like some of that stuff that's like it it doesn't it doesn't surprise me but it still blows my mind to think about stuff like that so if if you know that there's there's some kids around you um that are in a fatherless home and Mm -hmm. you are a man make sure that you are a positive influence you don't have to go raise the kids it's not your responsibility to raise the kids but every time that you see them you should be a beacon of light for those kids because they're looking for something yeah and i'm telling you right now you can take the opportunity to give back to society big time in that and like i said I'm, I don't take that as you have to go into their house and you have to raise their kids for them you have to spend three nights a week in there reading books with them and stuff like that but just be that beacon of light to go by and show them what a real man looks like. They just need to see you doing, even if that means go out of your way. If you normally jog in one direction in your neighborhood, but you know there's a couple kids that have a fatherless home, go jog by them. And when you see them stop, throw a couple good words into their head and stuff, because you would be surprised at how far that will go with that little kid. Um, And you might be able to save a life. I mean, I'm not trying to be too deep with that, but you might be able to save a life. And I'm not just talking about from a death standpoint, but I'm talking about from a lack of, um, production in society period uh and a trickle down you might be able to stop that chain right there and, and you have no idea how impactful your words may be to a kid that's mm-hmm. searching for a father figure um so so take that opportunity 
I'm not saying you, you got to take full responsibility for kids that are not yours, but take the responsibility to be a man and a good, good individual in society that, that, that sets that example. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. And I want to be really, our last episode was about vulnerability and I want to be really transparent and vulnerable about something that is uh, a shortcoming of mine because my wife just busted my ass about this last night. And I appreciate it. Does, I don't like it, but I appreciate it that she did. But I have a tendency to be very protective of my own children. Um, I'm very aware of the other kids that are around them and, and any, any people that are around them and other influences. And so I'm quick to protect, um, which is important. But I also need to be as aware or almost as aware of the other kids that don't have that role, that don't have that father figure, um, and make sure that uh, in the protecting of my own children, I don't shun somebody else that could have really used another man to just go, hey, come hang out with us for a minute. Yep. You know, so I, I, I'm, I have been guilty of that and uh, it's something I need to work on. And so I appreciate you bringing that up because I think it is important because I was actually wanting to wrap up that way of those of, no, no, that's great. You, you said it better than I, well, almost as good as I could have said it. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, second best is first loser. You're uh, not first, you're last. I can't remember what it is. Uh, One of those cliches. Uh, shake and um, bake. <laughs> shake and bake. That <laughs> helped. Um, I don't even know what to do with my hands. I can't. Once Tally Day Good Night starts going, it's like, <laughs> big red. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so be a be a, a role model for the kids, and I know mm. it's not your full responsibility, but certainly if God has placed some kids in your life for whatever reason, even if it's for a minute or a day or, or a, you know a, a season, then do what you can uh, to be the proper person. And how can you prepare yourself for that? Is is in the quiet time, you know? How can you continue to play your role properly? Is you have to prepare yourself, you know? You you play the way you prepare, and if if you're not working on personal growth, if you're not reading. If you're not listening to good things, if you're not building your your mind, if you're not growing yourself spiritually, whatever your beliefs are, uh, if you're not, uh, and I think we would have talked about this before, physically, if you're not setting an example there of being healthy, you know, with what you eat and what you, how you work out and do those different kinds of things, everybody's a little different, but they're, all those things are really important. So play that role for your own kids, play that role for your wife, be masculine, don't be scared to be masculine, positive masculinity is positive, that's why it's the first word. Uh, make sure that 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 you understand that, and then you understand the importance of it, and don't shy away from it. Don't apologize from it for it. And I don't care how many freaking ridiculous mainstream media left wing pieces of crap give you crap for being a real man. Just keep being one. Keep being one. We do not win by shine and uh, shine away from what our responsibility is. Okay. So we appreciate you guys. I hope I know this has helped. I appreciate you guys for chiming in. Thank you, O, for producing the hell out of this episode. It's going to be up um, and, and running in for a long time. And I want to make sure that you spread the word with this. Pass along to your friends. Get this one out there because it is uber important. There's a lot of great things going on in our country right now, but I don't think there's one thing more important than getting the men right. We get the men right. We get the country right. We get the world right. We love you guys. We truly mean that. Check us out, shepherd, shepherdsof.men, at Shepherds Men on Facebook, Instagram, all the other social media deals. Send us some love. Send us some comments communicate with us. And if you are that person that doesn't have a father figure, I want to hear from you this week. I want to hear from you as soon as you get done listening to this episode. If we can't help you directly, we will find somebody that will, that can play that role for you. Don't be ashamed of that. Step up to it. And let's win together. This has been The Movement.